miscommunication theory says that because males and females they interact in separate domains they learn each they learn the speech habits of their own domain they never mix with each other but whenever there is some situation in which they interact with each other because they are unfamiliar with the language habits of each other they may misunderstand or misinterpret each other this is called miscommunication theory let's see whether conversation analysis accepts this theory or not ca tells us that meaning is co-constructed by speakers during exchange of utterances speaker a speaks and speaker b listens then speaker b speaks and speaker a listens and because of their pair of utterances they co-construct meaning of their talk external assumptions background context they never matter in the meaning of their utterances gender other identity factors age color etc they have no role in construction of their meaning these conversational actions or functions are performed by adjacent peers first utterance is uttered by speaker a second by speaker b two different speakers produce these two utterances and uh, these two utterances the pair of utterances together make function of the uh, interaction function of the conversational pair such pairs because they are adjacent with each other one comes soon after the other we call them adjacency pairs so actually in conversation adjacency pairs construct the meaning now we formally define adjacency pairs first there is sequence of paired utterances they come in order one after the other second they produced by different speakers third the first utterance sets expectation for the second from first utterance we know that what would be the second utterance that is expected by the speaker a for example if one speaker greets it is expected that the other would reply again in form of greeting greeting follows greeting it makes a pair adjacency pair if one speaker invites the other speaker would accept this invitation or refuses this inv invitation so again two adjacent pairs of utterances uttered by two different speakers and first utterance sets expectation for the second similarly if first speaker asks uh, asks questions then the second speaker would provide answer to that for example this interaction is there anything bothering you speaker a asks a question now there is expected an answer according to this adjacency pair definition but the answer doesn't come there is pause of at least 1 second then speaker a asks continues asking question yes or no again there is pause of 1 and a half second then no answer comes because answer is expected and uh, it is expected conventionally so again the question come on 
then speaker B replies now. So this is how pairs are related with each other. Sometimes this adjacency is extended. The pattern is the same answer and question, but between this pair further utterances are inserted. These are called insertions. But the basic pattern of pairs remains the same. For example, would you like an ice cream? This is question by speaker A. Speaker B, what flavors are there? Instead of providing answer says, ask, what flavors are there? He asks question in response to question. But this, this is not expectation by the speaker A. Speaker A then finally answers. And this is how if question and answer are interrupted by insertions or more utterances, even then the expected pairs are maintained. More insertions, more than one, two, three, are possible between two pairs, but the basic pattern would prevail, that would be retained. And this question answer pairing is mutually expected. Both speakers expect that if there is question, there would be answer. So we conclude that conversational actions are functions like requests invitations, they are performed through adjacency pairs.